Hello, welcome. My name is San. This is a reading today for Libra. There are no dates on my readings. I trust that when they find you, if they resonate, then they're yours at that time. Libra, I've done your reading today with the Mystical Shaman blended with the Good Tarot in one stack. So you're going to see a mix of both decks in your spread today. So Libra, we're beginning your reading here with this, this Five of Fire and how it's coming through for you today is we're super shiny, first of all. This, I just bought a new good tarot deck, so they're really shimmery and shiny. So, um, the five of fire, really funny, actually, because I was going to say that your energy here is coming through as waiting for somebody to finally pay attention and stop being distracted. As I'm playing with the reflection of this card and getting all distracted by that element and not getting to the point of the message here it's like this is your energy going like i'm waiting i'm waiting you're waiting actually to deliver a message is how i'm feeling actually you're waiting to deliver a message to somebody who uh you know maybe doesn't stop talking long enough for you to get your message through um, because, or they're just really distracted. They're really otherly focused, otherwise focused. I want to say it's like if you've had those experiences where you're having a conversation and you keep trying to say something and they're just talking over you, not necessarily like intentionally or it just, you know, well, sometimes the conversations that you just keep starting to speak at the same time. So you know what I mean? Like your energies just aren't vibing in a sense. You keep talking at exactly the same moment or every time you go to say something, they're already into some thought of their own. So they just trample all over what you're saying. So I feel like you just keep finding yourself here, like waiting, waiting for the next pause, waiting for the next break in the conversation so that you can speak your piece. But it's also coming through with this three of fire and this soul retrieval card it's not so much the the meanings of the cards necessarily. I'm seeing this as you kind of, uh, well, pacing a little bit and positioning yourself in a way that you're hoping, you know, if they're not hearing your words, then hopefully they'll at least see. It's like you're trying to put your best foot forward. You're trying to put the best aspects of yourself on display with the soul retrieval card because you want them to notice you. You're trying to get noticed. You're trying to get them to maybe break out of their own focus of themselves in order for them to receive your message. You have something really powerful to communicate to them, but they're not noticing you at all. So I feel like you're kind of, you're starting to pace. You're, you're, you're doing like, well, what if I, what if I move over here? You're not breaking eye contact with them. Like it's this interesting, like, what if I go over here? Will you look at me over here? And then, you know, flashing this butterfly energy at them saying like, can you see, can you see the fullness of, of my energy? Are you perceiving the fullness of my energy? It's like, you're trying, you're blasting it out energetically. You're, you know, almost like with your gaze, both of these figures are really locked in, right? It's like, I feel like you're trying, it's, you know what it is? It's like, communicating through body language because your words aren't getting through so you're relying on other signal visual signals is what it looks like visual signals so and then they're coming in as this nine of earth here which is fitting because I often see it as somebody with a lot of clutter in their vibration in their auric field it's like they're not hearing you because they've just got a lot of other stuff going on like in their mind Maybe they, get, they could be juggling a lot of things. They're just really distracted. They've got too much going on. They're not perceiving you. And you're accurate in that. It's like you know that you're getting frustrated. You're you're accurate in that they're not. It's like they're looking at you. It's like you're having a conversation. They're looking right at you. Like I said, they're probably saying a lot of stuff. But it's only one way. And you're just getting, you're getting irritated with that. But at the same time, you feel pressed to be there. You have a big message to deliver is what I want to say because the king of water and the upper world because my instinct is to say, well, then just walk away. But with this king of water and the upper world coming next, like I feel like you're, you are feeling like you're getting this nudge to get through to them. You, it's like 
your intuition or your it's something to do with guidance. It's like you feel like you have guidance to offer them with this upper world energy. It's like you've you've caught a glimpse of something that could be incredibly helpful to them, especially because they're in this really cluttery energy. Sometimes this can actually um, come through as somebody who's sick, actually, who's really actually physically unwell, because I sometimes see this as, as being like virus energy, right? Like just energetic or biological pollution. So it's like you, you feel like you have the answer. Not only maybe do you have the answer for them, but you're feeling this incredible push to give it to them or deliver it to them or point it out to them. So, you know, maybe they're, they could be your child or your significant other. There's somebody who you care dearly for. Could be your child, I want to say, because as I'm, as I'm looking at these cards, I keep thinking about me and my daughter, about how I'm always saying, are you listening? Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? And I have to, how many times as a parent do you have to repeat yourself, right? Every day, like eat your breakfast, eat your breakfast, eat your breakfast. They just tune you out, right? They're still there. They're still talking to you, but they're in their own world. And it's really hard to get through to them, but you care. You have an important message and you really feel pressed to deliver it. With the six of earth, this is what I mean. The six of earth is all about kind of sharing the wealth, rebalancing resources. So it's like you've gotten, you've received an answer that you feel could really benefit them in this energy that they're in that is not benefiting them. The nine of earth also is, talks about a really um, self-sufficient energy, right? I want to say that I was going to say selfish, but I don't really want to say selfish. I want to say that they're just really self-focused. They're focused on, they're not seeing beyond their own stuff right now, at least, right? It's like they're just really caught up in something. So you're here saying like, I have a lot to offer you. I have a lot to offer you. And I feel like it's really coming to you, maybe intuitively, you know, as a, maybe as a hunch, or maybe you actually kind of received it as like a download type energy with this upper world. It's like this information dropping into your awareness because this, um, the six of earth is often talking to me about kind of opening and expanding your consciousness and having the ability to reach out farther and gather more, more data, more information, farther out, harder to reach details or resources. It's like you've opened that up for yourself and now you're wanting this one to benefit from what you've tapped into. So with the queen of air, it's like you're coming in here with a lot of clarity, a lot of knowingness. Like I said, tapping into higher upper world awareness. And it's like, you can't, you can't back down from this to you. It's like, how do they not see this? How it's almost like you've got this blazing aura around you it's like it's like the wind follows you around it's interesting because taming of the wind is coming next you know how you know how Beyonce every time you see Beyonce her hair is blowing and it's like she's always got a fan on her creating this atmosphere around her it's like you have that but it's all your knowingness you have a big knowingness particularly related to this one I want to say so if they're not your child specifically, I feel like you definitely feel like you're a guide to them in this regard, in this situation. It's like you have guidance for them that I want to say you received and you want to pass along to them. And you're, it's like, you're standing there in all your blazing glory, you know, pacing around back and forth in front of them, flashing the gold in a sense. And they're just, they're still just not getting it with the taming of the wind. It's like, energetically, they just got too much going on. Too much going on, interestingly, and I was talking about you having this big atmosphere around you. It actually may be, um, it's like they've already got so much going on that they can't take on your energy, especially when it's, it's big and blazing like this. That could be part of the message that you know, it's like they're, they're right at the brink of overwhelm. 
they've got so much going on that they can't add one more element to it. You know, with the four of cups coming next, it's actually maybe this is guidance for you, Libra, about being more subtle about it with the four of cups, right? The four of cups is kind of, well, it's an energy that is either being completely turned away from deliberately somebody saying, I'm not interested, or it's kind of their, their focus is elsewhere. And so they're not, they're just not seeing it. But I almost feel like that that could be beneficial for you to almost creep up in their blind spot in a sense. It's like be more subtle. The direct approach isn't working because they've got too much. They've got too much going on. You said they're on the brink of overwhelm if they're not already overwhelmed. And you're so blazing with this message that it's almost it, it's almost like maybe even a protective mechanism on their part where it's like they just they can't from their perspective they're already just hanging on to the balance like i said they're on the verge of overwhelm they're on the verge of tipping into collapse even maybe right it's like it's taking all of their focus to just maintain what they've got going on. So, and then the, with the journey and the council coming next, these are beautiful. I don't think I've ever seen them side by side before and seen how much they mirror each other. So I wanna, this, with these two cards, it's tipping into healing more. When I was saying that they could actually be maybe physically unwell, if it's not physically unwell, it's definitely energetic healing, emotional healing, some sort of, some form of healing. Or just representative of a journey, awakening journey. Because I want to say this is you with the journey. It's like your journey is complete. I was saying this the other day with this owl. It's like when the journey is completed, when you've reached enlightenment or you've reached the phase where you're getting um, regular, you could say downloads of information or just that the answers are readily available to you. It's like your crown is opened up. So I was saying here, it's like you've opened up the ability to, to plug into the answers, to get the answers to your questions very directly, very succinctly, right? Not having to wade through a whole bunch of stuff to find it. It's like it just it's just coming to you, just having this knack for finding the perfect key to the perfect problem, right? The solution to every problem is coming to you easier and easier. Because this, because this owl has opened for you. The crown has opened. So it's it's interesting because there's two cards in, now with you having this owl sidekick in a sense. This owl aspect of you that is very much becoming um, more in the forefront, right? It's like a, it's like a gift or a, an ability to perceive. I'm almost getting now like medical medium. That came through another reading recently too, where I think it was Aries, where it's like you're, you've maybe recently come into this ability to look at somebody in their, in their messes, in their mess, and just see clearly what is needed, like a medical medium, just knowing what is required in that specific situation. It doesn't have to be medicine related. Like I said, it could, it could be relationship dynamics. It's like you just, you're able to pierce through to the the core to the truth of what's going on and see very simply what the answer is. But I want to say with them, it's like they're in a very similar process or they're very close to you, I want to say. And so they are mimicking a lot of your energy, right? It's like there's a lot of similarities between the two of you, which is maybe confusing you about why they're not receiving this message from you. Right. And it's like, even if, even if they're letting you speak it to them, then they're kind of just disregarding it or, you know, they're not, they're not taking it. They're not pursuing it. Right. It's like they say, oh, that's interesting. And then they change the subject. They're not dialoguing about it. Or they're not expressing an interest. They're not grabbing onto it. You see what I'm saying? So there's, there's, there seems to be as clear as you are about what you're receiving and what the answer is. You do have some lack of clarity or trying to find the understanding about why it is they're not hearing you because you're so similar. 
You're both on a similar journey. You're both spiritual beings, however it comes through, right? You, you have a lot in common. You have a shared path. Maybe they're your partner. Maybe they're your child. They're very, very close to you, right? Maybe they've always understood you or received your messages until now. And this one is like, why aren't they hearing me now? And what I'm getting here is it's something to do with they are very similar to you, except they don't have the owl yet. It's like theirs is still closed. You see this? But the antlers are still, it's like that's, that part of the journey for them hasn't, hasn't come to fruition yet. It's so beautiful. It's, I've never noticed the similarities in these cards before. It's astounding to me. Even with the, the golden globe in, in the back, and then the, like the main difference, of course, is this open or closed crown chakra, perhaps open or closed ability to receive this higher guidance. Maybe it's like they haven't quite found their way to that yet. And it's like, that could be your message here. It's like, you're trying to communicate that you found the way, you know, how to, you know, how to tune in now. The channel is open for you and you want to share it with them. And they're just. They're not able to hear it yet. They're not. And then look at this card at the end here with the five of earth, right? It's like they're really in a haze. They're very much in a haze. I want to say if they're physically unwell, that could explain a lot of it too. Or if they're in like chronic pain, if they're in chronic pain or they're depressed, it's like they, they just, they can't hear you. Especially because you've come into this, this new awareness this new place for you energetically it's almost like that's where that's where this split is happening where I was saying where they've always understood you before but you've you've made this change and they haven't yet so it's almost like in a sense your paths have separated a little bit or your vibrations have separated a little bit and that's where that gap in the communication is now where why it's there all of a sudden if this is a new thing for you where it's like you've always been exactly on the same page and now suddenly you're not. It's like you're excitedly trying to share this with them and they're just not getting it. So I'm kind of getting here with the five of earth and the four of water here that there's, there's, there's a bit of a message coming through about trying to match where they are more. What does that mean exactly? Well, like I said, you can't come in with a great, big, excited um, energy because they're because they can't handle it. So it's like it's very much like tone it down, come in in a more. It's almost like subliminal in a sense in the subliminal realm, like just kind of maybe slipping suggestions subtly into conversations. You know, being more sly about it, like leaving a book out on the counter for them to, to see or not see, like leaving it more, uh, having it be more of a passive message rather than a, a full on. I'm just trying to see if there's anything else that wants to come out. It's interesting too, because, because of this here, I feel like this is a new thing that you've stepped into this kind of this opening up. It could just be this one specific situation. It's like you've had this big epiphany. You've had this grand epiphany. And it's like, it seems to be very much connected to them. You've had this grand epiphany about them. And that's why you're so adamant about wanting to bring it to them. Or you're saying, like, I'm feeling so guided to bring it to them. Because why would you receive it otherwise, right? So it's kind of coming through. Okay, this is the final message here. What it's saying is... Hold, hold that space, hold that answer, hold that vibration without trying to give it to them. Just be in it. You hold it, hold that space for them that they're going to come to it when they're ready to, but they're in, they're clearly in the midst of something. They're deep in the midst of something that I want to say is like really internal. I know that you're fully aware of what it is. I know that, I mean, this isn't a mystery to you what's going on with them. In fact, it's very clear to you and that's why you're wanting to, to help them. But from their perspective, it's kind of this, 
this solo journey. They need to get to it on their own or get to the place where they're able to hear your message. They have to get to that part on their own. And all you can really do is just, is just wait, right? Just be patient and hold the space. Just be patient and hold the space. They're going to come to it at some point. And the less you're adamant about it, I feel like the faster they're going to come around to it. Again, my daughter does the same thing. She has to come to it on her own, right? And then it's a great idea. So I'm going to continue to pull cards, create an extended. If you're interested in that, the link is in the description. If not, I'll see you next time, Libra. Thanks. Bye.